I'm back. It's been a while. I hope you've been good. How is business doing? How are you building your business? How are you doing that? Whatever you're doing, fashion, beauty, catering, entertainment, whatever the business is, I'm sure you're doing pretty well. 2021 is a great year. We both started good. Of course, so many of us are so, so scared of overhyping 2021. The way 2020 was overhyped. But all the same, what's gonna happen is gonna happen. We can't just sit back and say, oh, because COVID is out there, we won't do what we have to do. We need to do our part to have our miracles happen. So then let's talk a little bit about customers. I found myself recently having to talk to people, clients, um, students about customers, getting new customers, so retaining the ones you have. Obviously, without your customers, what's the business? I mean, that's why you're in business. That's why I'm in business. So I have people I want to sell to. Okay, so how do you do the customer thing? I've, for many new business owners, I think the first concern, your first um, problem, which I've been asked in many, asked in many um, seminars or anywhere I find myself has always been, oh, I'm just starting, I don't have people patronizing me, I don't know how to get the first set of people. If you haven't checked uh, my blog, you can check it, it's um, www.dgvstyles.com, spelled D-G-V. S T Y L E S dot com. There are a few write ups there on customer retention and gaining new customers and getting your business moving. So, back to my talk, when I get to ask a question, I, I tell them, Well, it doesn't fall from the sky. Of course, you have to market, you have to publicize, raise awareness, get people to know, but there's some small small things you have to do and one thing i always mention is you are first of all a walking billboard How, are you advertising your business the proper way are people seeing your business written on you are they seeing you like someone they want to reckon with in that industry for example if i meet a hairstylist now i personally i size you up i look at you i can i look at few things can i move close to you i'm sorry part of well i don't have to be sorry about it you cannot be a hairstylist, you move close to people and not afford to smell good. Hmm. That's a crime. Or in the makeup industry, I am not smelling good. You open your mouth, you're going to move so close to my face. Excuse me. So that matters. Or you're going to measure me in the fashion industry and you want to measure people. And by the time you raise your hands to measure them, what comes out cannot be, oh my God. Those are not the world. It's not jazz. It's not your village people. It is you now. It is you versus your business. You're building it yourself. And these are the things, small things that will attract people to you. Remember, customer, getting customers is actually not so easy. Retaining them is a big one. I have this thing, like the third time they come, they are good to target. First timers, they will always come. Every business, I mean, you've seen yourself pass and buy a store or a new shop or you just notice something new and you want to pop in to see what is happening there. That one is normal. Now, if I go there the first time, I get what I want to buy going back means something is taking me back there i can afford to i can choose to go back and choose not to go back so if i go back the second time it's probably to double check or to see do i really want to go there or probably i want to look for something now if i go there the third time hmm, there's a higher likelihood i'll keep on going there so when you have your first timers when they come the second time work more when they come the third time you're already winning them do your best not to lose them. Do your best to hold them on. You know, it's easy to retain customers than getting new ones. Retain the ones you have. They have 95% chances of bringing new people to you because referral is a key in business. I mean, as a business owner, I can categorically say this. In all the years of my business, I've enjoyed referral as a good source of getting customers all the time. They talk about, they tell you, oh, that woman, she's pleasant to be with, she talks well, although she doesn't pick her phone. People say that all the time, but, oh, chat her off, she's going to reply. When I'm busy, I don't pick my phone, I'm sorry. It's part of work discipline and all and all like that. So what what is charming? Your personality, the way you attend to them, the way you make them feel warm around you. Mm -hmm. All those things are small things, but small things that count. Small but powerful things that count. So customer retention, customer acquisition, two things, but they work together hand in hand. I mean, I'd rather work on retaining the ones I have while I'm, get, I'm aiming to getting new ones. Because the ones I have, they are my channels. They're the people that will bring in more people. They're the magnets that will attract more clients to me. 
you know so that is part of what we're talking about no matter the business you have the odds of succeeding lies on the customers you have the customers that will stay because the bad customer hmm, they are problems they are the ones they can they can destroy your business they can tell the world what did not happen so why not focus on making them feel welcome in that business why not focus on making them get exactly what they are looking for? Why not focus on making your business something they want to tell the whole world of? I mean, build a brand, build an image, build an experience. There are places I go to and I just keep, I just keep going back there. Probably because of the ambience. There's a particular store I go to in Bad, so in Ibado. What attracts me there is the music I hear. I didn't even know for a long time. So one day I realized, okay, why do I keep coming back to this store? Then I realized the ambience is so sweet. I want to get there. I want to hear good music. It attracts me. So what is attracting customers to your business? Look about, look into that first. What can attract them is my, my, my reception. It doesn't have to be a reception per se. The way you welcome them is also reception. Are the people there friendly enough? Are they, invite, are they inviting, waiting for me, blah, 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 and customer retention. You work on it because if you don't, you're, not, you're missing out on a lot on boosting your revenue, you know, per se. You know, when you retain them, your business has a chance of growing, like I said earlier, from between 25% to 95%. So you have a part to do, a lot of things to do. It matters a lot. It matters, it counts a lot. How do you measure your customer retention? Over a given period of time, let's say um, three months, you can give yourself between now, don't use January, again, let's use February or whatever month, three months, and check the number of new customers you have at the end of those three months. Then also check the number of customers, the old one and the new ones you've had. Then look at how did they come in? How are they staying? Are they, is it that when I have one, one goes out? Or when I have one, they keep on they, pick, they keep on bringing in more people. That is how to measure your customer retention power. If it doesn't work, if you're not seeing that thing at work, then you know there's a lot of work to do. You need to sit back. You need to put some plans on paper. Okay, now I need to attract people. Is it, does it have to do with me? Does it have to do with my staff? Does it have to do with my front line of front 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 and um, front desk workers? Does it have to do with my company as a whole? Because there's some offices I get to and I don't feel like going back. Whatever it is, your office should smell good. People want to go come into your office and feel welcome and invite. Someone walks in my office one day and says it smells like abroad. I say, well, it is part of the abroad. We are aiming global. It's a global brand, so I wanted to come in and feel so comfortable. I wanted to come in and feel relaxed and know that you want to keep coming back here. The tips you can use in retaining your customers is trying to keep your business active. And for depending on the kind of business you're offering, goods, products, services, whatever, I think one of the one of the things is teaching and keep educating them. You can just choose a piece of your product, wear it, teach them ways to use it, give them ideas. If it's a cloth, how to style it, how to put this and this together. These are things that educate them. You know, customers sometimes don't want to get bored. And I don't want to keep on buying, buying, buying. The ones you have bought, have you even used them? Of course. Definitely, I wanted to buy, but when they buy, 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 and they don't use, or they buy and feel, oh, I don't have to go back there, that's a problem. Keep on renewing things, keep on revamping, revamp the business, then stay in touch. It could be through SMS, it could be through email, it could be through WhatsApp, it could be through your, through your social media. Constantly stay in touch with your customers. Know this everybody wants to feel important. Oh, yes, everybody wants to be loved, everybody wants to feel like I matter, I count to someone, and you can never tell. Being nice to one customer can mean a whole lot to them. I mean, some people never get anyone to say hello to them or how are you doing today. I remember I called one, one of my vendors in Lagos one day, and each time I called her, I said, Oh, hello, good morning, how are you today? One day she told me, She said, Do you know you're the only person that calls? And the first thing the person you ask me is, How am I today? People just call and they go straight to the business. I said, Oh, wow. I didn't even know that. I didn't even give that a thought. I just did it out of my normal or in boyish way. Mm -hmm. So now you see that small thing you're doing to that customer could be why they're always coming back. It could be you just saying them or giving them a warm hug when they come around, giving them or talking to them when they look worried. I mean, I do that a lot. If you look worried, I say, do you want to talk about it? If you don't want to talk about it, I say, okay, I'm praying along, don't worry, you're going to be fine. Keep in touch with your customers. They don't want to be left out. If you haven't seen someone for a while, send them a message or just checking you up. Sometimes you might have done something they don't want to tell you about. But you checking in on them can say, oh, last time I came, the way you talked to me or the way you reacted, and you were busy, you didn't even notice. Definitely just say, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't even notice that you've won them back. Remember, it's easier to retain than to search for some new people. Loyal customers, reward them.
if they have been coming over and over i do this every christmas it's one of my tricks i do during my during, during the festive season if you're making clothes probably most times you run buba i'll tell you run buba is free it's my bonus for the year it's a way of rewarding your loyal customers so whatever it is just do something small it's a small some people don't get gifts some people like us they don't get they hardly get gifts and when they get something small, I, I give a particular client of mine yeah. something like as small as an apron and she went on and on and on about it i couldn't believe i was like no it's just an apron but obviously the little apron means a lot more to her like okay you thought of giving me something because i patronized you over the year and that cost me nothing reward the loyalty they have a reason they have choices in fact in the world of today there are too many choices around. Make them see that you value their patronage. You appreciate the fact that they, they spend money. If they buy something, send a thank you note. You you know how you will feel if you get a thank you note from someone you buy something from. So that could be a part of your customer retention strategy as well. Correct mistakes. Hmm, mistakes will happen. Correct it. Don't be too proud to admit. I had a funny encounter recently. I made a cloth for a client and I didn't even know the fabric wasn't good and the cloth got got turned. So when she sent me the message, I'm so sorry. I'm going to replace it free of charge and I'm going to make it as fast as possible. 24, 48 hours, I'm giving you a brand new one. Sometimes you need to go the extra mile. Don't blame them. Don't play the blame game. Oh, I also bought the fabric and I paid for it. I didn't know. It's not my fault. Replace. Hmm. That's one person. That act of kindness could win you millions if, in case you don't know. So correct your mistakes. If you make so, if something is not right and the customer points your points your attention to it, be fast to admit and tell them, ah, Emma, you know, oh, Miko, I'm sorry. I can fix that for you. And customers can be very difficult to deal with. Oh, I can say that all the time but you need to be very diplomatic you need to be wise you need to be intelligent in handling customers they're different type of people personally i like to study my customers very my clients very well study them know what works what works for a does not work for b and i don't want to approach you the way i'm approaching everybody i want us to have a good working relationship so if i see that for you it is text message or sms or a long note or just so i'm sorry know how to correct your mistakes they say they always write. Of course, that is not the right way to say it. It's better said that customer is, or is king in the customer-oriented society and the king is not always right. But they want to say, I'm a customer, I'm, all, I'm always right. So learn to admit your mistake, JJ. Last, last, you won't work for the person again if you don't want to. Of course, there are stages in your business where you need to leave some people out because it might be just be pain in your neck. They, they give you more problems than the money they are paying. I'll teach you one day one of the styles to avoid difficult customers or when they don't want to pay how to deal with that one. So with the tips on how to avoid those customers that don't want to pay or those difficult ones, take note of take note of the things I've said today. Use them. They'll be helpful, I know. They've really helped me. I share straight from my experiences. I don't so it's not about books, it's not about theory. It's things that have worked for me in my to the kids of business that I try to put across to you to, to get some tips from. I keep learning, you keep learning, we all keep learning. So let's see you some other time. I remain at Jeronke Olubanjo. Take care and to have a great day. Stay good, stay on top and keep soaring higher and higher.